Philip Teresi, Saturdays 11 to 1 on News Talk 580-1059. KMJ. Real excited to talk to our next guest. He is the director of the Center for Biofeedback and Behavior Therapy in Addison at Dallas, Texas. Dr. Rusty Lozano is a, uh, he's a behavior therapist. And we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, story out of the Huffington Post that suggests that nostalgia might be a mechanism for uh, emotional therapy. Rusty, thanks for taking the time today. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Uh, this is a really interesting story. Um, the study is, is, uh, is pretty quite heady considering, you know, some of the other things that are out floating around. Yeah, it, it, the, in a nutshell, yeah. the, the, they they had uh, their subjects write, for lack of a better, for a more concise term, a blog post about something they had done that day, and they found that down the road, going back to that blog post, something as simple as recounting just a run-of-the-mill conversation actually brought them a lot of pleasure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of science and, and neuroscience that actually backs that up. You know, anytime that we have an experience, whether it be uh, a memory that is as early as childhood or something that you've done yesterday, and it's been programmed or it's been saved in our database in the brain as a positive experience, then, you know, when you recollect those and you re-image those, those uh, ideals, uh, your brain can't tell a difference between what it sees with the eyes and what it sees with the mind. And so it feels as if it's real. So those positive feelings and emotions actually come back to you. Uh, the same neurotransmitters that are responsible for uh, happy emotions and, and making you feel calm and relaxed, those are stimulated through the imagery that you're seeing in the imagination. It's quite fascinating. So is it, is it essential, or I, I shouldn't say is it essential, do you get more of a positive uh, result with a first-person experience versus going back to a favorite book, a favorite story? Well, it could be either. I mean, it, it really matters on, on how, the experience was, um, how the experience was experienced or how that moment was experienced in time. Um, so it could either be a first-hand recollection with a family member or even like, you know, uh, one of the strongest senses that we have in the body, which is olfactory. You know, we have the holidays coming up. And walking into a household, you know, if you live abroad and, and you walk into a, your mother's home and all of a sudden you smell something familiar, that there's comfort and it brings back a lot of memories uh, that you've had that were positively associated. So th there are several facets that you can experience this and several different layers that you can experience this particular phenomenon. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a face-to-face -face encounter that you had with the person. It could be a person, place, or thing for that you know, for that matter. <laughs> sure. Uh, pretty, pretty phenomenal though, but it's, these are powerful, uh, recollection, uh, mechanisms in the brain that, that produce this kind of response. Um, and I think it's a healthy, you know, it's, it's a very healthy, uh, pastime to kind of remember some of these things. It, and, you know, to be honest with you, go ahead. I, well, I was going to ask you, uh, it, the first thing that springs to my mind is, of course, social media, Facebook and Twitter uh, being such mm -hmm. dominant forces. Is there anything to be said for even if you choose to max out your privacy settings, it, it, only you logged into your own account can see this. Is there something to be said for when you have a good moment creating that post so you can go back and visit it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if, if, it's, uh, if it happens to be social media, that's called permanence. I mean, you pick up where you left off. Uh, we, we have the same kind of connections with, with family and friends. You know, if you have a friend that lives in Pittsburgh you haven't seen for uh, years and years, you know, maybe a high school acquaintance or even just a good friend, and then you see them again, uh, you don't reintroduce yourself and, you know, start from scratch on the friendship. You pick up where you left off. And those little uh, mile marker uh, components on social media can serve in the same fa basis that uh, they serve as little time frames or little uh, bookmarks that that can actually spark and invoke positive uh, emotions, the same ones that were experienced at the time that you're writing them. Now, the, you talk about revisiting a friend and, of course, you know, the, the ongoing relationship. I'm thinking of what one particular friend of mine. He's I've known the guy since middle school. And there's a handful of stories, and it's all the, you know, it's all, we call them the war stories, you know, when we were younger and wilder and single yeah. and childless. 
And right. inevitably, at some point, if we have a visit of any duration, either he or I will end up, if not completely retelling the story, at least referencing it. Is that the same mechanism mm -hmm. that, that you're, you're, you're trying to recall the pleasure of that probably, you know, felonious behavior without actually yeah. going out and, and reengaging? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and the fact that, you know, the fact that they were experienced together can also be a triggering mechanism for that. I know I had the same kind of concept when, you know, every Thanksgiving, uh, my my siblings, we all get together at my place and uh, and with my mom and and I have extended, uh, you know, brother and sister, stepbrother and sister that, have, you know, recently come re-engage back in our life. Uh, but, you know, it's it's interesting because we'll we'll sit there and, and just all four of us being together, it, a conversation will pick up. Hey, do you remember when we were little and we used to, you know, crawdad fishing and then uh, Alan pushed Jason in the water and we were laughing about it. And so it's just like, you know, the, the fact that you're being that you're around people that you experience that with is a triggering mechanism and it's a non-conscious process. So you're not actively thinking, well, let's let's talk about you know some of the things that we used to do when we were little. It's just the fact that you're in the presence of that person and you had that experience that you're accessing that area of the brain um, that will invoke those memory sets. And it's not even anything that you're consciously aware of or you're consciously trying to do. It's just it's just a you know, conversation topic that just kind of comes up. It's really interesting. What is... What's the long-term benefit of that? Because I've got, you know, I've got friends that I see, if not weekly, close to it. And then I've got, you know, other people that I... I just don't get to see but once or twice a year. But there there are people who I can go and, and and spend a little bit of time with and as much as yeah, there's you know, the creation of new memories because what sense does it make to just sit there and talk about that thing that happened once twenty years ago? Sure. I'll come away from that from that experience in a mentally in a better place. What's the long term benefit of kind of revisiting these positive things, be it through people or through going back to a diary or a blog post? Well, I think that the the long term benefit would be, you know, the state of your, your current circumstances. If you find yourself uh in a depressed mood or uh consistently find yourself in a depressed mood or feeling anxiety, you can kind of revisit these things and and it has an uplifting effect on the mood. You know, the longer you stay in, in any given emotional state, then the more that you're actually you're conditioning that particular uh, behavior to be more of an active presence in your life. And so, you know, it can be very uplifting. Um, it's good for the brain. I think that, you know, studies have shown now that uh, using things like puzzles and, and online gameplay, I think they have like a... I can't think of the company now, but they're showing that, you know, more of the geriatric community can, can get online and actually, you know, work and, and work aspects of the brain and, and recall and like process things mentally. And it has a, a positive effect on uh, combating Alzheimer's and dementia. And so uh, overall, I think it's, it's a good thing to kind of take a, a mental break. You know, if you need to check out or if you're ever finding yourself in a point where you're in a, at a lull, and, uh, and you're thinking about depressing things, or even if you're going presently through something that's really uh, depressing, um, that, you know, revisiting these things can actually, revisiting those positive memories can actually have an uplifting effect and a positive outcome on emotional sets. We're talking with Rusty Lozano with the Center for Biofeedback and Behavior Therapy out of Addison in Dallas, Texas. Find him online at onlinebiofeedback.com. Rusty, uh, along with the, the, the personal visits and the blog posts, uh, er, earlier you had talked about, you know, it, it, the olfactory reminder, go, walking into Grandma's house to the smell of Thanksgiving dinner. Um, it, it, and one of the, I think at this point everybody in the world knows, you know, is going to go, okay, Captain Obvious. Music. Um, it, yeah. th there are songs, there are albums that will snap me back, even if only for the, you know, three and a half minutes it's on. If somebody's... Yeah. If somebody is struggling with anxiety or depression issues, is mm -hmm. there a therapeutic benefit to going back to something as simple as, you know, hey, offspring smash, as soon as I hear, okay, time to relax, I'm, you know, 16 in summer school again? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, without a doubt, and it's funny that we're having this conversation because it just wrapped up my day, and I'm, I'm actually working with a little girl, she's 16, 
and uh, and she has a, a habit of, of picking her skin. Ooh. It's not like trickle tinlomania where they they pull out their hair, but she picks little sores on her skin, and you know she has difficulty expressing emotion. And so her mom said, "Well, she's she's expressed some interest in listening to music." Um, and so when I went back and I processed this with her, she goes, "Well, music helps me really get my emotions out. It can actually ex- help me express how I feel." Um, and so yes. To, overall wise, you know, listening to old tracks, you know, I, I'm a product of the eighties and uh, I know that sometimes when I just hear a random song um, that I haven't heard in a long time, I'll be like, Oh my gosh, I remember this song when we were roller skating um, and we were kids and we we're just little punk kids running around with all these teenagers. Um, and you know, what, how did I all of a sudden now have that memory um, when I was just kind of driving down the road and, and hear this song? So yes, uh, music is is a, a phenomenal, powerful conduit um, that can actually invoke those uh, same types of responses, and I think it's good. I mean, there are music that's you know there, everybody knows the um, the happy song from that Disney movie that that plays. Uh, I can't think of it right now, but but it has like an uplifting beat. And yeah. So you know, certainly you know, listening to any kind of sounds that. Uh, can invoke positive emotion is actually really good. And there's a whole study on that. If you look up binaural beats and the, the way that they're using sounds, they can actually stimulate brainwave activity by listening to faster tones. Slower tones can stimulate sleep. Faster tones can can uh, stimulate excitatory responses. And so now they're using this a lot in commercials or using it a lot in movies to create a, a, a suspense or interest uh, because of the sounds, they're stimulating responses in the brain. Very cool. Rusty Lozano, he is a uh, counselor with the Center for Biofeedback and Behavior Therapy in Texas. Uh, we're going to continue the conversation. We're talking about nostalgia as a, a, an emotional or anxiety uh, improvement mechanism. <laughs> Rusty, hang on the line. We'll be back in just a minute. Philip DeResi, live and local on KMJ on a Saturday. Thanks for hanging out. Eleven fifty-two on KMJ. Philip Teresi on a Saturday morning. My guest, Rusty Lozano. He's with the Center for Biofeedback and Behavior Therapy. Online at onlinebiofeedback.com. If you've got a question for Rusty, you can always email him at rusty at onlinebiofeedback.com. Rusty, thanks for hanging out with us today. Hey, thanks, Phil. So, I, I wanted to ask you before I cut you loose here. Uh, you you've got a great website and good explanations of uh, what you're doing. Something that popped out at me though that I didn't expect from an on, from a biofeedback group, abdominal pain mm-hmm. management. Mm-hmm. I, it, it, wh- how, how do how does that work? Because I'm I'm thinking in terms of uh, more behavioral stuff, but uh, the abdominal would be physical, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, you know they're actually. A lot of times, uh, well, they're classifying abdominal pain as abdominal migraines, and it has some of the same characteristics as a conventional migraine, which is, uh, you know, can be vasoconstriction uh, of the vesicles that are in and around the tissue of the abdomen. Yeah. And so um, a lot of times, you know, and, and it can also be associated to IBS um, or <clears throat> other types of, uh, you know, uh, food or, or gastrointestinal sensitivities, like uh um, say, for instance, like gluten intolerance or, um, you know, other types of uh, aller- allergic reactions. But, you know, it's a stress-related disorder. And so stress-related disorders are typically, you know, it's manifested through the body's fight-or-flight mechanism. Sure. Um, so your muscles tighten up, your pupils dilate, your breathing speeds up. And so whenever you, you – there's a physical response that happens when the stress mechanism is induced. Now, that could be – something that either you perceive visually or perceive cognitively, and then the body engages. And again, this, this, is, this goes back to how the brain can't tell a difference between what it sees with the eyes and what it sees with the mind. But that physical mechanism, the physical reaction, is, uh, it is a physiological process that, you know, it, it has the same types of, uh, of physiological underlying uh, responses that you would see in a, in a migraine headache. Um, and you know, uh, it's, it can be perplexing a lot of times, uh, with abdominal migraines or abdominal pain, uh, parents or any individual kind of write it off as like, oh, well, 
you know, my stomach hurts, but, you know, uh, what, what can I do? Well, go and rest or take some medication or, or you know, take a drink. Uh, orange juice, kind of the citric acid kind of calms the gut. But, you know, yeah. what we have a tendency to overlook is, um, is that, you know, a lot of times we, we don't pay attention to the stress responses in the body. And, you know, they may start out acute as a behavioral response, but then over time they become more chronic and it leads to more physical, you know, responses or physical manifestations. As soon as you explain yeah. it, 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 it makes perfect sense. And, uh, and, and that's why you're a doctor and I'm not. Rusty, thank you for making time for us today. You're very welcome, Phil. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Certainly. You can find Rusty Lozano online at onlinebiofeedback.com. It's the Center for Biofeedback and Behavior Therapy. They're based in Texas. And uh, you can also ask Rusty any of your questions uh, at rusty at onlinebiofeedback.com. Really appreciate the Center for Biofeedback and Behavior Therapy sharing his expertise with us today. Again, onlinebiofeedback.com. CBS News is on the way at the top of the hour, and then uh, we're back. And uh, some neighbors giving their uh, their giving their neighbors negative feedback. Uh, how far is too far with a Halloween display out in the yard? Uh, c- can you overdo it? And uh, we have an expert witness joining us after CBS News. I found a random seven year old. We're going to talk to her in just a couple of minutes. Philip Teresi, live and local on a Saturday. It's News Talk 580, 105.9 KMJ. Get over to Sweet Deals. Don't miss out. That LASIK eye surgery, half off at Fog, Maxwell, and Lanier. It's a sweet deal on sale only at kmjnow.com.